liberals to hear, uh, liberals who want to claim that they are the only uh, rightful heir to um, the uh, the sort of um, you know, age of reason, uh, age of enlightenment, and, and the ideals of um, democratic rights, etc. Um, God, sometimes I uh, really struggle for words here. Um, all right. So with this said, that Marx is in some sense a continuation of this, uh, I think that is a good way to understand uh, his critique of capitalism uh, and to understand capitalism as something that is uh, not inherently connected to the uh, ideals of the 17th and 18th century of, um, of the Enlightenment and, and, and even classical uh, liberalism, uh, democratic liberalism, that is to say. Um, so what is the dream of uh, the French revolutionary? To overthrow the monarchy, right? And what is the promise of the French Revolution? that with the fall of the monarchy, uh, the state will be ruled not by an aristocracy, it will become a republic, right? A res publica, a thing that is publicly owned, a uh, thing that belongs to le peuple, as the French liked to say. Uh, that was a significant term um, during the French Revolution, uh, right? The people. Um, the state belongs to the people. That is the ultimate ideal, the dream, the motivation uh, for the French Revolution to uh, distribute power from uh, the sole monarch and the uh, very few aristocrats, to the people as a whole. Uh, democratic power. Uh, and each person has an equal share of that power insofar as each person has one vote. That is the goal of, uh, of the French Revolution. And Marx, I think, we can understand as taking up those values of um, equality, of uh, universal equality in terms of um, political power and agency, uh, and of, moreover, what it means for a state to genuinely belong to the people, to be genuinely democratic. So I find that comment from, an early, from early Marx, and I don't remember where he says it, uh, it's possibly, no, um, right, the comment that um, communism is a form of radical democracy. Uh, I find that to be a, a very significant comment for him to make. Um, now, what happens after the French Revolution? Right? Uh, after the end of the tradition of the French monarchy, right? we look into the void, we hear the silence, right? something is going to speak using that language from Arendt last lecture. Uh, 
<clears throat> what arises with these new democratic republican political forms is an economic form that seems to be tailor-made for democracy. And this is capitalism. Capitalism is, uh, right, what is capitalism? Capitalism, uh, right, in, in, in some forms we can understand capitalism as, um, you know, being traceable back to the ancient Greeks, to any economy uh, in which, um, you know, uh, investment is um, a means of accruing power. Um, but <clears throat> uh, capitalism as we think of it today, or as Marx thinks of it, uh, capitalism uh, modern capitalism uh, is crystallized in um, Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. Let me just look up the date on that uh, to be sure about it. Which is originally published 1776 in England, right? So, 1776, what else happens in 1776? We have the American Revolution, right? Uh, and so, Adam Smith's articulation of capitalism, uh, where we have a uh, level playing field in which um, <clears throat> the uh, hardest workers the most innovative uh, will be most rewarded, uh, a meritocracy, uh, seems to be uh, a, an economy for all the people. Everyone has a chance to succeed uh, in a capitalist system. You work hard, <clears throat> you innovate, if you have a good idea, uh, you can rise to the top. And so, uh, with the fall of the monarchy through the revolution, uh, we enter into the very beginning uh, larval stage of a mass society where there's still uh, enormous class divisions, but uh, everyone more or less has, in theory anyway, equal political power. <clears throat> uh, therefore, in theory, uh, everyone has the potential to uh, rise to the top. Uh, if the majority votes for you, that's who's in power. Uh, anyone can become an elected official. And there, that idea is mirrored uh, somewhat nicely in the idea of capitalism, right? Uh, that if you produce a product, that a uh, majority of people want, a great number of people want, you can become successful. You don't have to be born into a certain family. You don't have to have uh, any kind of pedigree, uh, right? You don't have to be um, sanctioned by the king. Uh, if you can do it, you can become rich. So there is a kind of symmetry uh, between democracy and capitalism. However, for Marx, uh, capitalism, the democratic appearance of capitalism is entirely illusory. Uh, capitalism is uh, anti-democratic. Capitalism is a new way of installing uh, a hierarchy between oppressor and oppressed. Uh, whereas before the revolution, uh, there were the aristocrats and the monarch who were the oppressors and the uh, starving uh, and disenfranchised uh, peasants who were the oppressed, uh, who eventually revolted. 
after the revolution, there were the uh, the capitalists, the uh, owning class, the owners of uh, resources, the means of production, the uh, economic elite, who oppressed the uh, working classes right, and the poor. Uh, so capitalism is the way, the means by which uh, hierarchy and a new form of aristocracy uh, is preserved through this democratic revolution. Uh, capitalism is a way of retaining some of the class distinctions, or uh, most of, or if not all of, very nearly all of the class distinctions that existed before the revolution. So capitalism is, uh, although it appears to mirror these democratic movements, is in fact uh, an obstacle to uh, the true goals of those democratic revolutions. And so why was capitalism uh, Two questions resulting from this. First of all, uh, well, we'll begin with why was capitalism allowed to um, become the uh, attendant economic system to the political uh, form of republicanism um, after the revolutions? And second, uh, why is the democratic appearance of capitalism merely an, an appearance. Why is capitalism, in fact, uh, not democratic? So this is um, a large part of the first um, part of the Communist Manifesto, uh, where Marx talks about uh, the origin of um, the bourgeoisie. Right? And, uh, you know, I personally find um, a lot of Marxist uh, terminology, Marxist categories, uh, to be a little irritating. Um, they're jargony. They um, they can be off-putting. They're they're used often to um, sort of be a shorthand uh, to. Um, exert a, a sense of um, you know, superiority or something like that. Uh, so I have, I have um, trouble with some of the Marxist uh, jargon, but um, the way he describes this uh, hierarchy after the revolution is in terms of uh, the bourgeoisie, uh, which is the owner class, uh, the upper class, the uh, rich class, not the aristocrats, the monarchs who are deposed, their heads were cut off uh, in the revolution, but the new ruling class uh, after the revolution. These are the bourgeoisie and the working class uh, <clears throat> who are what the peasantry became after the revolution. Marx refers to as the proletariat, right? so uh, the bourgeoisie and uh, the proletariat. And the, uh, the, bourgeois, uh, the bourgeoisie, the, the bourgeois, um, which is, the, um, is a class of people, right? It, it's a class we, we could... Um, associate with, although it's a really rough analogy, associate with what we think of as the middle class. Uh, and 